Hey everyone, this is Justin from the Digital Bench. It is Friday, April 28th, and it's time for another Loot Day, Zer Day video. So today we're gonna... I'm gonna update you guys on where I'm at with comes to raid gear. I am gonna take a special look at the Crota's End weapons, and we're gonna check out what Zer is selling this week. So starting with armor, uh, it was pretty much a bust this week. I only got one new piece of armor across all three characters. Um, I did happen to get the Raid Shader from Crota Zen, the Dance of Bones. So it's like a brown and green. So I can I haven't tried it on other sets yet. I've been just stuck on the Crota's End gear right now. So, but I can see it being pretty sweet looking. Probably on the Rise of Iron set. That's probably one that will probably look pretty cool on. So. But yeah, here's my Warlock. Um, no new armor pieces. I did put the ornament on the robes, so... So all I'm missing now is the boots and the gauntlet still. My Hunter, which is the only character that I got new piece of armor from. We got the Crow's End boots, and I put the ornament on. We also put the ornament on the cloak. So I'm still missing the gauntlets and the helmet. And then the Titan, whoo boy. Titan didn't get anything, so all I have is the gauntlets and the Titan mark. So this is currently the Vault of Glass boots, helmet, and chest piece. So I'm missing quite a few pieces from that. So it looks like I'm going to have to do some extra runs of Crota's Zen over the next couple weeks before it comes back as the feature raid. So yeah, kind of sucks, but... Oh well, doing Crota's Zen at 390 will be less complicated. Just kill Eerie right off the bat, and this one person can run the sword for Crota. So let's go check out what Zer has for sale. Alright, so here we are at the tower. Zer is by the speaker, actually across the hall from the speaker. I wonder if this door is ever going to open. Probably not, since the tower is probably going to be destroyed in Destiny 2. Well, it pretty much is going to be destroyed. Alright, so right off the bat we have our Legacy Engram for the chest. Um, this is only for year one gear, so if you're missing anything to fill out your blueprints, you can purchase that. Otherwise, don't even bother. We got the Immolation Fist for the Titan. Let's see, Accelerant unlocks the Sunbreaker subclass node Explosive Pyre for free. Enemies brought down by your hammer explode, chaining fiery solar damage to other enemies. Now, if you do use a Sunbreaker Titan and you do use this node, if you equip these gauntlets, you basically get that node for free, and then you can equip something else in its place. So, if that's something you do, might be worth picking up. Knucklehead Radar. So, this is the helmet for the Hunter. It has sensor pack. Radar remains visible while aiming primary weapons. So, any primary weapon you have equipped will... When you're aiming down the sights, the radar will still be on your screen. Now, there is an artifact that does the same thing. So, this is not as great and exotic as it used to be. But, I mean, if you are missing that artifact, uh, 
uh, the name. Do I have it on me? I may not have it on this character. Let's see real quick. Uh, no. So the name escapes me. I apologize for that. But if you don't have that artifact, then you can pick that up. But when it comes to exotics for hunters, there's much better ones to get, unfortunately. Obsidian Mind. So, Insatiable, Nova Bomb kills reduce the cooldown of your next Nova Bomb. Uh, if you are a Voidwalker Warlock, um, it is a great helmet to have. Especially when you pair it with bad Juju, you'll be throwing Nova Bombs like there's no tomorrow. So, it is a, uh, that is a pretty sweet combination, Obsidian Mind and bad Juju. So, but, if you tend to... Uh, you tend to use uh, Stormcaller or for raids when you are you're sticking with Sunsinger. Not very useful, but some for like PvP. If you bad Juju, MCD Mind combo. It's not too bad. So, And let's see what weapon we got. We got Trespasser. Ooh. It is a pretty awesome sidearm. Let's see, weapon fires bursts of bullets with dead, deadly accuracy. It actually shoots like bursts of three. Kind of reminds me of what was it Robocop, like the gun from Robocop. I think it was that movie. Uh, so relentless tracker kills with weapon grant enhanced motion tracking. Yeah, blah blah. Kills with this weapon grant enhanced motion tracker resolution for a short time. And unrepentant reloading after a kill caused the next burst to be longer and more powerful sunburst. It is a really good sidearm. I definitely like to use it when it's like arc and specialist. Um, I don't see any reason to use it in the raids. PvP is actually a lot of fun. It was the uh, f pretty much the answer for shotguns, but now with the special ammo economy changing, um, I don't know if people are using it as much, but it is um, it's still a fun weapon to use. So. I would recommend picking that up. And then for our bundles, we have Invective with the Storm's Reproach ornament and Telesto with the Lingering Vestige ornament, which I have those on my Warlock right now, which Invective is not leveled up, so it's a good thing I checked that. So Invective is a solar shotgun. It has full auto by default, so you can just hold down the trigger and just let loose. Final round, so the last round of the magazine deals bonus damage, and then Invective, this weapon, actually regenerates ammo over time. So this was, this is a great shotgun to use in the Crucible, because it will just regenerate ammo. You don't need to hit the ammo crates. Um, PvE-wise... I really haven't used it used this since year one. It was actually good for some of the Prison of the Elder encounters, but like for the raids and stuff, nothing really comes to mind where Invective would uh, would be helpful. So this is the ornament you get with this Storm's Reproach. So it's that cracked, looks like the solar flames are bursting out of it, so it looks really cool. And then Telesto... Uh, if you guys are a fan of Halo, this is basically the Needler from Halo. You got unplanned reprieve, fusion projectiles attach and detonate with a delayed void blast. Battle runner kills with this weapon, grant a brief boost to sprint's top speed, and then harbinger spark multi kills with this weapon, spawn ores for your allies. So it's just like the Needler, so you shoot like a bunch of projectiles at enemy and it will cause like a void blast which would if it, you're fighting mobs you actually it's easy to kill multiple enemies so that means you're going to be dropping orbs for days so it's actually a really awesome weapon and then this is the ornament that they're selling with it the lingering uh, vestige so looks pretty cool alright and then everything else is typical zero fare you got your stuff for your sparrows. Don't even bother unless you're trying to collect all the sparrows for your record book. 
because these will upgrade sparrows that you can buy, and then you can fill out those slots. You have the ammo synth, so these are great for the raids right now. Which, speaking of which, I am going to buy. It was never mine. Buy some right now. Don't have a lot of strange coins, but to kind of make up for all the ones I used this past week. Three are coins, so you can pop these on any ultra boss. They have a chance in exotic ingram. Glass needles, if you want to reroll any exotic armors, try to get tier 12. You can use that. And then modes of light and exotic shards. So, Alright, so we're going to go out to the field to check out these weapons. Alright, so here we are in our little play space. We have the invective out, fully upgraded. So full auto, holding down that trigger, all you gotta do. So it is actually pretty good for PvE. Actually pretty good for PvP as well because regenerating ammo will help you avoid all those nerfs to special ammo. No, I think I just picked up ammo, so that's not quite how regenerating ammo works, so we will try to waste this. And then it should regenerate ammo. So there you go. So yeah, I just generated four shots for me after a while. So it is not a bad shotgun. I mean, it's not gonna outperform like matadors and party crashers and stuff in PvP, but it is, it isn't a bad solution for dealing with the new special ammo economy in PvP and it's pretty solid for PvE but in a world where we need Galahorn sleepers and Dark Drinker Ray's Lighter it's not going to be taken up that special slot so then let's check out the Telesto pretty handy fusion rifle like you see, it does the darts just like the Needler did, and then it causes like a little explosion. Generates an orb, see? I need special ammo though. Shut off a little bit, so. Perfect for those void specialist weeks. PvP! I don't really see too many people using it in PvP. But it is fun to use on the strikes and the nightfalls, so just got some more ammo for it. Shoot a couple more times and then we will move on to the trespasser. I'm trying to shorten this whole section, try not to be as redundant as I have been the past couple of weeks, so. So long as you are shooting this in like a group of enemies, you're gonna be generating orbs. And your fellow players need them orbs, so. Alright, now let's get out the Trespasser. Right now it only has three shots, so. Trespasser is a... It's a pretty sweet sidearm. Oh, I need special ammo. Come on! Come on, game! Try not to make this video crazy long, as it has been. Give me your special ammo. I mean, I could pop a special. So I'm pretty sure I have a special. Oh, if I don't get any from these guys, then... Yeah, let me just pop a special. 
Come on, come on, come on. There we go. I got like 73. Jesus. Alright, so Trespasser. It is a pretty awesome sidearm. I mean, if you haven't fallen in love with sidearms yet, this will definitely make you a fan. That just feels good. As you can see, it has like an enhanced radar. Which is very nice. Or at least it did. There you go. Oh yeah, it has that resolution tracker. So yeah, as you're using it, it changes the radar, which is pretty awesome. So, awesome gun for arc specialist weeks. Pretty handy in the crucible against shotguns. It's just, again, the special ammo economy has changed, so you may... It may not be the greatest solution, but... It is something worth checking out for PvP. Alright, so let's talk about Curtis end weapons, which I have one of them equipped right now. So we'll start with the heavies first. So we got Song of Ear Ute, which is the heavy machine gun. Let me just hide in here real quick. So it has Hive Disruptors to increase damage to Hive Majors, which plenty of Hive Majors in the raid. So, and then anytime you're dealing with like a Strike with Hive or a Nightfall with Hive, you know, that's going to do more damage. Uh, has Grenadier, so decreases the cooldown of your grenades. And then Dark Breaker projectiles will overpenetrate through Hive Night Wall of Darkness. So anytime those knights throw up their wall to try to heal, this is actually going to go right through them. Now it's a solid heavy machine gun. Um, I don't actually think there is any bad heavy machine guns. I mean, if materia from Wrath Machine, the stability is pretty dreadful, but it's still not awful. It still has uses. So this is like, it's not amazing. It's just like a good all-around heavy machine gun. So if you're missing, if you're looking for a good heavy machine gun and... Well, one that's arc. Then this is definitely worth grabbing. Just when it comes to Curtis End, though, your heavy slots are going to be used up by swords and some sort of rocket launcher. So, unfortunately, heavy is not that great. But for other raids like King's Fall, where heavy machine guns are great to have, uh, it's like I said, it's worth picking up. We're getting to drop. It drops from Crota. So hopefully you can get that drop from there. Now Hunger of Crota, which we now need heavy for that. So we can we'll pop a heavy for... Uh... No, we still got a minute on that shit. Alright, so I'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll do it. So back in year one where nobody can get Galahorn, or you'd be very lucky to get Galahorn, Crota... Hunger of Crota was a worthy substitute. Oop, there we go. We got, well, we got one heavy. Oh, no, we got two. And here is why. Because it has, for the most part, the same perk, so... They have High Disruptor, of course, has tracking, so shells from this weapon track their targets, so always great to have on a rocket launcher. And it has cluster bombs, so it's kind of like Wolfpack rounds, just not as high in DPS, so once the rocket hits, a bunch of bombs will kind of shoot out and detonate on the target. So back in year one, if you didn't have a Galahorn for Crota, then having a Hunger of Crota was your next best answer. And now since it also has cluster bombs, well since it has cluster bombs on it, it's 
actually not bad for Axis either. But again, as you see, there's cluster bombs. That one did not track. Well, it did, but. So, why don't. I don't recommend using a rocket launcher over a dark drinker on Axis. If you don't have Dark Drinker and you did manage to get a Hunger of Crota from Crota's End, then that is a worthy substitute. So the Hunger Crota actually only drops from the bridge part of Crota's End, so the second encounter from the raid, so it's you don't have to go that far into it to actually get your hands on a Hunger Crota. So. I saw heavy drop. Oh, there it is. So we'll shoot this one more time. So it's pretty easy to get. But I've only been getting sword breakers from the bridge, so... Maybe it's not so easy. I don't know. Alright, so... Let's go into specials, which sadly I did not get the uh, Light of the Abyss fusion rifle. So hopefully in a later video I'll be able to show that all. So... We do have a sword breaker, which I've gotten a million of these. So again, high disruptor, so great for hive majors, which this is my go-to shotgun for Crota's End. Uh, has gran grenadiers, so decreases the cooldown of grenades when used, and then has final rounds, so last round in the magazine deals bonus damage. So it doesn't have full auto, which is usually the go-to perk you need for PVE. And it's not gonna be able to compete against, say, like Matador or Party Crasher in PvP. So, unless it is a void week for the activities, or you're in Crota's End, it's like the only time that Swordbreaker really shines. It actually doesn't work too bad on the captains for Wrath Machine, because they all have void shields, so. It's not a bad idea. But again, you kind of want full auto to keep those captains staggered, because they will fuck you up if you let them, so. Not a bad idea, but you can do better. Now, since I don't have fusion, the only other possible special drop is actually Black Spindle. Which has an interesting history. Now there was a sniper rifle in Crota Zen called Black Hammer. And it's perk. It's actually pretty similar perks. Actually no, I think it's the same perks. They just, they have changed them since then. So they both were solar damage. Uh, white Nail, rapid landing three precision shots will refill the magazine from your reserves. Now White Nail in year one for Black Hammer, it did not take ammo from your reserves. It just gave you the three bullets back. Which was pretty insane. So if you kept landing precision shots, say, on a boss, this thing would you would never have to reload and you would never lose ammo. It was amazing. And I never actually got it to drop. I never had a black hammer. Leroy had a black hammer. I think he had three black hammers. And he never even upgraded them to this point. Which is... This is like heresy. It is mmm mmm. I want to kill that man. <laughs> and then has Mulligan, so missing shot has a chance to turn ammo directly to the magazine. So you're getting bullets back, regardless of what you do. So if you miss it completely, you're getting bullets back. Or if you're rapidly landing three precision shots, you're getting bullets. You're getting like your ammo refilled. So it was an amazing sniper rifle. Now I. Don't know if they ever. I don't know, but when like Taken King came out, they planned on bringing like the raids back or not. They were probably thinking about it, but I guess they didn't make a decision, because essentially they brought Black Hammer back as the Black Spindle, which is this. I'll take the ornament off so you can kind of get a better look at it. So this is basically what Black Hammer looked like. So this is a high impact sniper rifle, like the highest impact. So it's on the level of like Ex Machina, Devil's Dawn. And Event Horizon, so this is like a go-to for quite a few activities. Um, biggest one would probably be Golgoroth. Everybody uses Black Hammer for Golgoroth, so because you can just sit there and just shoot Golgoroth in the stomach and never have to reload. 
It is pretty amazing. We'll put that Taken Shader back on because that looks awesome. So it is. It is an amazing sniper rifle. It is amazing for bosses. It is. Let's see if I can actually get precision shot. Probably. It's going to be hard. We need to get precision shots with the enemies running around. I'm not the best at using a sniper rifle. Unless I'm like shooting a stationary ball. So. Let's see if I can get these knights. Not didn't do it. Did not I get a precision shot on the other one? I might not have. Can I see? Let's see. That sucks. Well, anyway, it's it's amazing sniper rifle. If. Honestly, I only really use it on Golgoroth. I mean, it is a great solution if you don't have Ex Machina, a good Event Horizon, or Devil's Dawn. Devil's Dawn is pretty easy to get, though. But the only issue with Black Spindle right now is, like, heavies are very important right now in the raid. So, Galahorns, Sleeper Simulates, the Swords, those are going to take up your exotic slot. The only time that they don't would be... Would be Golgoroth, which Black Hammer is the go-to for Golgoroth. So I didn't. Yeah, it's because I shot him before. So, but you get the idea. It's just gonna refill my ammo from my reserves. So it's gonna take bullets from the five shots that I have left outside those three, and just put it back. So, but the reason I'm bringing this up is that um, in the Taken King, there was actually a specific. It's like a cool Easter egg, I guess. It was like a, it was one of the daily story missions, and if you went a different path, you got this like bonus area, which basically was from the Tannic Strike. If you actually can kill all the ads within ten minutes, you actually got this weapon to drop. Now you can still do that. Now you actually can go. I think that's percent shot. You actually can go and I think it was Lost Light is the mission. You can actually go and do the heroic version of that mission and then just do the just do the uh, requirement for the Black Spindle. Now keep in mind it is very hard to kill all the enemies in 10 minutes. So you may want to bring some friends along if that is the method you're going to go with. But it actually has a chance of dropping on Iriut and Crota's Inn. So the raid still has a sniper rifle that drops. So you may get, if you don't have Black Spindle, you may get lucky and get it from Iriut on one of your runs. So. Let's do this. I got your back. I am taking out this dude. You need to die. Damn it. Oh, now I'm gonna do a taken. I didn't even shoot him. Come on, fam. There we go. Yeah! Public event. So, Black Spindle. Amazing sniper rival. Definitely pick that up. Alright. I think I talked a little bit too long about that. So, let's start getting into the primary. So, we'll start with Word of Crota. Word of Crota is a void hand cannon. Now, this was actually the last raid that had elemental weapons. Well, elemental primaries, I should say. So, it was... Crota's End does have a little nostalgia, and it is 
pretty special regardless how you felt a quarters in year one so this is your last raid to get those elemental primaries so word of crota it is high disruptor of course zen moment so causing damage weapon increases its stability and phantom gift rapidly landing three precision hits returns one round to the magazine so they're not bad perks for a hand cannon it's just it is outclassed by all, all the other raid hand cannons with the exception of to me i think zali's bane is still worse than this gun But, you know, year one, when you're looking for... Because I never had Atheon's epilogue, so this was my go-to for Void. So I had a lot of time with Word of Crota, and I don't think it's bad. It's not the best. See, I just see I just got, like, a one put back in the magazine. It's just not... With so many options now, it is not the best hand cannon or the best raid hand cannon, so... But I still enjoy it. So now we will take a look at Oversoul Edic, which is the pulse rifle, high disruptor of course, full auto, so you can just hold a trigger down and go crazy, and dark breaker, it over penetrates hive night walls, so just like ear, the song of ear you, the bullets will go through the hive major walls when they try to heal. So I can just hold the button down. And it just puts in that work. So it is a great pulse rifle. It's just not extraordinary, I guess, compared to uh, the Steel Medulla or the Smite of Moraine. It's just all like it's just an all round just like solid pulse rifle. So it really isn't anything beyond that. So, I mean, if you're looking for just a solid all-around pulse rifle, then Oversoul is great. But if you're looking for something... If you're looking for something more specific or just something better, I mean, those... Like I said, the Smite of Moraine and the... Steel Medulla are better solutions when it comes to the raid pulse rifles. And then PvP, you're gonna want, there's like other pulse rifles you're gonna wanna use. Like the Clever Dragon, Waltz, the ones that you can get those god rolls on. Even though I think they nerfed like the archetype for, for Clever Dragon. And we have the Abyss Defiant, uh, actually, I'm not doing these in any order of, like, my preference. I'm just picking them. So, Abyss Defiant, uh, Disruptor, um, has hip fire, so this weapon has bonus accuracy while firing from the hip. And then Focus Fire, when zoom, this weapon fires slower, but causes additional damage. And then, uh, Lich Bane projectiles have a chance of disorienting high wizards. So, it's a good auto rifle. There is gonna be, There are better auto rifles. Um, when it comes to the raids, Genesis Chain... I think Atheon's epilogue is actually better than this. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty decent stability. Maybe not. Maybe it might be better than Atheon's epilogue. But like Genesis Chain, I think is the go-to. King's Fall one, the Dristan one is just trash. So it's actually it. You know what? It is a good weapon. It is a very good weapon. The perk for the high wizards, though. Uh, even though... Like... Was it distracting? Or does it blind? I forget. It's been so, so long. I just completely... Alright, disorienting high wizards. It's a good perk. But... How often are you doing activities that have wizards? Now, my friend used it a lot in Prison Velders when it was the um, 
I don't remember the name of it, but it was the Flame Knight. Because it always had wizards that spawn with it. So he would use the Abyss Defiant on the wizards, and then I would basically take care of the wizards. So they weren't an issue at all. So, again, its perk is pretty specific. Kind of like the rest of them, though. I don't know. I'm kind of getting distracted here. So, it's a solid auto rifle. We'll just leave it at that. And then, last but not least, Fang of Ear Ute. So, Hive Disruptor, of course, it has spray and play, so increase the reload speed of this weapon when the mag is empty. Target mark enemies hit by this weapon are briefly highlighted. And then, it has third eye radar, stays active while aiming down the weapon sights. This is a great scout rifle. Uh, it's no vision of confluence, but I would put it since it's more of an all-around good scout rifle I would put it second division of confluence so you got your you got your radar it has spray and play the target thing while it's like kind of cool in a gimmick sense it's not really helpful at all even when you're not using microphones like it's whatever. Your goal is to kill all the enemies, so marking a target is not that big of a deal. But it is an overall solid scout rifle. Um, not going to be really good for PvP, but for PvE, anytime it is arc burn, especially arc burn with small arms, this is the weapon... Well, if you don't have Fatebringer, this is the weapon you are going to whip out and touch somebody. Oh, I meant to say that. So that's basically it for the Crota Zen weapon. So, so Crota Zen, I mean, it was like overall the weapons are pretty solid from Crota Zen. So Hunger Crota, it's a great substitute for Galahorn. Ear Ute, solid heavy machine gun. Swordbreaker, great for the raid. Um, and I'm outside the raid though, it's gonna have very specific uses. Black Spindle, if you can get it to drop, is an amazing sniper rifle if you don't have one of the legendary versions of those very high impact snipes. And then if you're doing King's Fall, you wanna have that weapon. You want that for Gogoroth. And then all the raid primaries are are solid. Nothing out of this world. They're just all just solid weapons. And I, to me, I think they're all worth owning. And they're good solutions for like burn weeks and other activities outside of PvP. Like none of this stuff is really good for PvP. Well, heavies are okay. Now the last thing we're going to look at is the Necrochasm. Which is the was the the exotic of the raid at the time. So, Vault of Glass had its Vex, Mythicast, and Crotozen had Necrochasm, which is an arc auto rifle. Which the perks were updated since year one so as cascade melee kills automatically reload a portion of the weapons magazine Zen moment causes damage this weapon increases the stability and then curse bringer kills this weapon trigger a curse thrall explosion now in year one the curse bringer perk you needed to do a precision shot and then the curse thrall explosion would happen which back then it wasn't it sounded really cool, but it really wasn't in year one. It was pretty... Necrocrats was pretty trash. Year three, it's now any kill with this weapon caused a Curse Thrall explosion. Um, which is much, much better. The only issue with it is it's still... As you can see, like the stability is still all over the place for it, even when Zen Moment is there. 
so it's still not a great auto rifle. It's better than Dristan from King's Fall, but... But compared to the other auto rifles like Abyss Defiant, Atheon's Epilogue, Chance to Chain, no, it's not that good. Also, you gotta be careful because the explosion can hurt you too. I know people use it for the. for traversing the abyss in Kurtisan. Which is a good go to weapon for that. However, you just gotta be careful that you're not shooting something close to you and causing an explosion and killing you or possibly killing your teammates. Especially if you cause a chain reaction that causes Curse Thrall to explode, and then, yeah, you're. Could be you could be wiping if you're not careful with this. Which I just realized that I didn't really talk about Outbreak Prime and Touch of Malice from the King's Fall and Wrath Machine videos, so I'll probably touch upon those once those weeks come back. So Necrochasm is actually really easy to get now. Well, if you run the raid, so to get it, you need the husk the pit auto rifle, which drops from any hive enemy. The most luck I had or have seen is killing ogres. Um, I would recommend doing the Shrine of Oryx mission. And there's an ogre right before the boss room. So you can kill that, and if it doesn't drop, you can just jump off the side and die, and then you can have another chance to kill it over. And I've always gotten the Husk of the Pit in like a couple tries, so. So either I'm really lucky or the drop rate is pretty high when it comes to ogres. Now at that point, to level up the weapon, you have to kill a specific type of high. So for my Necrochasm, it was easy, I just had to kill Thrall, so. Doing that first moon mission where, you know, here comes the hive, I can just sat there and just kill Thrall and then just kill myself to start that little encounter over again. But knights could also be the requirement, as well as wizards, and those are going to be a little tougher to do. After that, you just go to the speaker, it gives you like 25 motes of light to like cleanse the weapon and upgrade it. And then after that, you just need to kill Omnigul from the Will of Crota Strike. Any difficulty, so you can do it on the lowest difficulty and still get credit. You have to traverse the Abyss, so complete the first encounter on Crota's end. And then you have to kill Crota at 390. So, a lot easier to get than year one, because year one you had to get like the Crux of Crota, which only dropped from Crota on hard mode, and it was a very low drop rate. Last summer, I spent a good portion of it doing solo runs of Crota trying to get a Crux pick because that was like the one one of the exotics that I was missing at the time. I'm still missing Chaperone, so. But it is a fun weapon to use, but not much else. So that's basically it for all the Crota stuff, so hopefully next time Crota is around I get my Light of the Abyss. And I will talk about that briefly. So these videos are going to get shorter as time goes on. Next week is the Vault of Glass, so I will talk about the Vault of Glass weapons at that point in time. So, but yeah. Just to recap, Crow's Inn has a great collection of weapons. Much better than King's Fall. Probably not as good as Wrath Machine. But there's some gems in there that are worth having and they're a lot of fun to use, so... So yeah, so next week we'll have the reset video, of course, so I'll see if I can finish off my armor set for the Age of Triumph for my Warlock, so we can get that shader. Still looking for a couple of shaders, still looking for that last ornament for our Lord of Wolves, so that will be on Tuesday. I will have a new Vault of Glass video next week. Hopefully it's the Hunter run. I want to desperately have a whole run with just my Hunter, so hopefully that goes smoothly next week. 
and then next Friday we will check out what Zer has again, and I will go into detail about the Volta Glass weapon. So maybe I get my Hezen's Vengeance next week. I think that's the only one I'm missing, so hopefully I can talk about all the weapons on our Friday video. So, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying this look at Destiny as we get closer and closer to Destiny 2. So... If you like our Destiny content, you know, please give us a like, subscribe, comments. I actually been talking to a couple people in some of these videos, so I love talking about Destiny. So if you want to talk about Destiny, just you know, post some comments below in the video, and we can talk about Destiny. Love talking about Destiny. So tomorrow is actually our podcast, so that'll be up next week, and I'm sure there'll be some Destiny talk on there. So look forward to that sometime next week and um that's it so again thank you guys for watching and i will catch you next time look at that stability is crazy